What's up guys? Today we're gonna be talking about Sweater Ventures. You might have seen their ads pop up on, you know, different, your Instagram or YouTube, but they're emerging VC fund and they're kind of honestly revolutionizing the way that venture capital works and how the industry works. So I actually, you know, downloaded their app and joined their program and share my thoughts on it. Full disclaimer, this is not telling you why or why not to invest in Sweater. This is just my personal review and experience with the app. So hopefully you guys learned something from this. Before I get too deep into to sweater, it's important uh, to set up how traditional VC works. Traditional VC, it's long-term investments, right? You're looking at 10-year lockup periods most of the time. And these venture funds are raising money and they're allocating to early stage uh, entrepreneurs. So they're coming in and they're, they're taking an equity position in either you know a seed, series A, series B round, helping that company grow and hoping for an exit. Venture inherently is a little more risky than other asset classes just because you know, you're dealing with these startups, right? And a lot of them actually fail. And we'll get into the kind of the portfolio economics of venture capital here in a second. But typically, you know, a venture capital fund, they're kind of reserved for accredited investors and above, most of them. We have videos that talk about that. But if you want to become an angel investor, you want to start allocating to these emerging managers, you have to go to like Kickstart or you know Start Engine and try and crowdfund some money. It's really the only way. Sweater's kind of a hybrid of all these things. So Sweater, they just kind of launched their first fund this year. It's called the Cashmere Fund. And really what makes them different comes down to a couple of things, a fee structure and lockup period. So as I mentioned, traditional VCs more longer term, right? Like you invest in a traditional VC, you probably probably won't see your principal back for seven to 10 years. So Sweater, uh, they have shares. So if I invest $1,000, I think right now their share cost is like $20 a share. You know, you'll get about 50 shares in their Sweater fund. They'll strike what's called a net asset value of those underlining shares. So basically, whatever their portfolio companies are worth, that's you know gonna be correlate to what your shares are worth. Traditional VCs don't do that. Sweater's actually registered as an investment company. What they do is their shares, they have semi-annual redemption windows. So they basically say every six months that they'll buy up to 5% of the fund's value. So if it was 100 million, uh, they buy up to $5 million. So if you wanted to sell your shares, as long as you were it within that 5%, then you could theoretically, according to how they structured it, get your money back, uh, which is kind of cool, right? That you can that you can get in and it's more it's more liquid, right? Which is which is a better investment for retail investors. So again, traditional VC is often reserved for you know as a small piece of a pension fund portfolio or these large accredited investors that want exposure to emerging businesses. But uh, what Sweater's doing is they're really making it accessible to the retail investors. So your regular Joe Schmo that, that wants to invest in startups. Another thing that differentiates Sweater from tr traditional VCs is their fee structure. Traditional VCs will typically charge a two and 20, right? A 2% management fee and then a 20% performance fee, meaning uh, they'll participate in 20% of the upside profits. Sweater doesn't do that. They just charge a 2.5% management fee and they don't participate on the upside. Um, and they actually have some clauses in there. It's kind of weird where they can charge up to 5.9% management fee basically of the fund because they'll charge 2.5% as a management fee. And then they basically say that, hey, there's other expenses that the fund's gonna incur, but our max exposure is 5.9%. You know, that's good and bad. It's good because, you know, if they do well, you know, as an investor, you get to participate in more of the upside. But what I think it it's missing is an, an alignment of interests. Especially today, a lot of uh, fund managers are critiqued because of the lack of alignment of interest between the managers of the fund and the investors or the LPs. Theoretically, they could just sit back and collect their management fees and they're really not incentivized to make the inve best investment for you. Now they argue against that saying, well, no, we're still incentivized because you know the bigger the fund grows, the larger our income grows. And they're saying the fund's not gonna grow unless we do well. So it's kind of this you know, back and forth. I don't know if I love it, but you know, I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it works. Full disclosure, kudos to them. It's been a feat. 
You know, to in order to put something like this together from a regulatory perspective and to actually get it up and running, like honestly, I'm impressed. Sweater's kind of pioneering this open market uh, retail investment for venture capital. And if they do well, then I wouldn't be surprised if we see several other competing firms emerge. You know, because right now, like, you know, if you're an angel investor, you can go, you can go choose like a business on Kickstarter or something. But sweater, you you can't. Like they retain full discretion of the funds you allocate. So another couple differences and things I wanna get into is traditional VCs, you'll call your capital at several different stages. It's like if I make a $10 million commitment, they're gonna be issuing what's called capital call notices over the next, you know, probably two years well, well, I'll be sending them pieces of that 10 million, maybe a million at a time. Sweater, alternatively, you you allocate everything up front. So it's kind of good and bad. It's convenient, but from a cash management perspective, might create this false sense of uh, urgency to allocate those dollars. So when you log onto their app, so I ended up allocating, full disclosure, right? I think it's pretty cool. I didn't do too much, but you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how it plays out. So when you log into the app, you can actually see like which investments they've made. Made. So you can't choose which ones directly you want to invest in, but you can see which ones they've made. And if you look at it, they've actually allocated to a lot of other venture capital funds. They'll do direct investment. You know, they'll they'll make act, uh, investments into portfolio companies, but they'll also make investments to other funds, which um, in case you didn't notice, those other funds have fees as well that they're gonna be charging. So there is kind of a, you know, multiple fee structure that you're gonna be dealing with as an investor there. Now, last thing that I don't know if I love about Sweater is they calculate NAV daily, which is pretty subjective in nature. So NAV is the net asset value of those underlying, you know, shares that I talked about at the beginning. And instead of the market dictating, right? So like in the stock market, the market dictates the price of the stock through supply and demand, right? And and buying pressures and selling pressures. As opposed to this, they basically internally evaluate, hey, you know, I think these shares are worth X, you know? And it's really subjective in nature. And, you know, I'm sure that they'll go through annual audits and stuff to have a third party verify. But from a day-to-day -day perspective on the actual pricing of those shares is inherently very subjective, which I don't love. But, you know, hey, you, you had, to, that's the only way they could do it, like, Seriously, again, I kudos to them for making this work. I'm actually really excited about them. I've met Jesse, uh, the founder before. He's an awesome guy. I think this is, uh, you know, could be revolutionizing for the venture capital space. Let me know your thoughts on Sweater VC. I'd love to hear if any of you guys decided to make an investment with them or not. I'll keep you guys updated on how the performance is and how it works. Um, I'll, you know, I'll film a follow-up video on this, but uh, again, like do your research. It's totally up to you. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts on, you know, if you think this type of venture capital is going to be relevant in five or 10 years, if it's the new trend or if it's just a SPAC trend, right? Where it comes and it leaves. All right. Thanks guys. Talk to you later.